Hi right, guys, so in this video, um, you know, prove that you have a nilpotent linear operator then on a finite dimensional vector space, and that vector space is the direct sum of cyclic subspaces. And we do it by induction on the dimension of V. Okay, the base case being when V as dimension one, well, um, you know, so so any 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 non-zero vector in V will be a cyclic vector in that case. So um, this this like theorem is kind of trivial when V has dimension one. It's only interesting if if V has big dimension and um, and, and and stuff. Okay. okay. Like for example, like if um, so if dimension of v is one and t is nilpotent, that it automatically means that t is just zero, and it's just this. This theorem is just um, kind of easy to state. Okay. So now let's assume the result for. Uh, let, let's say we're given a uh, vector space V and we'll assume that the result is true whenever for all the W's which have dimension less than the dimension of V. Okay. And now we'll let W be the range of T. Now since T to the M is zero, like for some M, T cannot be invertible. If it was, then we multiply both sides by T to the minus M we'd have the identity equals zero, that's, uh, that's impossible. Okay, so T is not invertible. That means it's null space is non-trivial. That means the dimension of the range is strictly less than the dimension of V. Okay, in particular, the dimension, we can write W as a sum of cyclic subspaces, like C of W1 plus da da da, da plus C of WN as a direct sum. Okay. Not only that, but all of these wi's are in t of v, so we can write them as t of vi. And now our claim is that um, we look at w prime as a sum of cyclic subspaces c of v1 up to c of vn. It's a direct sum. So this is our claim. Okay, we define w prime to be this, um, and we want we want these direct sum things. Okay, um, I, I, I guess I didn't didn't mention, but we, you can just check that um, since W i is a cyclic vector and T of V i equals W i, V i is also a cyclic vector. Okay. okay. Um, so so let's review our claim that this. W prime is a direct sum. Okay, and now we're going to use our um, our kind of our our notation our 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 note from the last video, saying that every element of this uh, cyclic subspace C of V one can be written as a polynomial in T times V one, and every and, and same for all of them, right? For each element of C of VI, we're going to write it as some polynomial of T times VI. Okay. And we're, we have to show that um, we have a direct sum, so we're going to suppose that um, P1 of T of V1 plus P2 of T of V2 plus, da, 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 plus PN of T of VN equals zero, and our goal is to show that each term is zero. Okay. And that will that will show us that the sum is a direct sum, right? And it's kind of like showing linear independence. Okay, so um, our first part of the claim is we're gonna uh, we're gonna try to attempt to show that in these polynomials um, they all have trivial constant term, and we're gonna show if like one of the constant terms is non-zero, then we get a contradiction. Okay, so let's say like p p i of zero is non-zero. Well, then um, p i and t to the m i have no 
of no common factor, their GCD is 1, like the only factors of t to the mi is t, and pi has no factor of t, so th these two have GCD of 1, okay, and we're assuming that t to the mi of vi is 0. Remember, um, vi is a cyclic vector, so we can do this. Okay, and now we're going to use the fact that since they have GCD 1, we can find a polynomial A and B such that API plus B T to the MI is 1. Okay, that seems fine, but um, what happens? Well then, VI, we can write VI as, like we can take this equation and apply it and, and, and oh yeah, here, uh, this is a T. This is the identity. Okay, so we'll take this equation and apply it to vi, and then we get um, the identity applied to vi is just vi, and then we get a of t pi of t of vi plus b t to the mi of vi, and t to the mi of vi is just zero, right? So we get vi is a of t times pi of t times vi. Okay, that seems okay but but remember we have this equation relating um, pi of t vi to all the pj like we have the equation um, p1 of t v1 plus da, 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 plus pn of t vn equals zero so just write that as um, oh yeah here's a minus one should be a minus sign here Right, but write that as the equation pi of t equals pi of t vi is equal to the summation minus pj of t vj where j is not equal to i and I'll multiply both sides by a of t and a of t pi of t of vi is just vi and on the right hand side we have a minus a of t pj of t vj now just apply t. Well, t of v, vi is wi, t of vj is just wj. We have wi is a linear combination of the wj's. And this is um, impossible because uh, by we assume by induction that um, we had a direct sum. Okay. So if we if this sum is direct, you can't have that something in the i thing is the linear combination of the others. Okay, so that's a contradiction. Okay, and what is it a contradiction to? Um, we assumed then we assume we were assuming that p i of of zero is non-zero. Well, then p i of zero must be zero for all i. Okay. So each term pi has a factor of, of x, right? So then we can write pi of t as just t times qi of t, where just qi is just some other polynomial, right? Okay. In particular, um, pi of t of vi is just qi of t times t of vi, or qi of t of t of vi, which is qi of t wi. And so we have a linear combination of the cyclic subspaces of the wi's equals zero. Since that's a direct sum, we have qi of t of wi equals zero for all i, but we saw qi of t wi is just pi of t vi. So each term in the, in, in the sum is zero. So w prime is the direct sum of c of u of the, all the cyclic subspaces. Okay, and now the very end of the proof is to notice that w prime, which we constructed by induction, plus the kernel of t is all of v. Why? Well, notice that t of w prime is just t of v. And then from that you get that, um, you know, if you take a vector in v, well, you can write t of v as t of w prime, 
and that means that um, v minus w prime is in the kernel. So in other words, you can write v as w prime plus x, where x is in the kernel, establishing this statement. And now notice that like um, just extend, so use a basis for w prime and extend it to a basis of v, just using whatever elements of the kernel of t you need. And all the elements of the kernel of t, they are automatically cyclic subspaces of dimension one. So um, you extend your basis using elements of kernel of t, you get a basis of v um, using cyclic, cyclic vectors. Okay. And that could, and that that proves the induction step, and by induction, it, that's it. Okay. So in the next video, we we know that a nilpotent matrix has um can be written if you have a nil or sorry if you have a nilpotent linear transformation, you can write V as the direct sum of cyclic subspaces. Okay. And now we want to see like if you have a cyclic subspace. Um, what is the matrix of T on that subspace? What does it look like?